What's going on, everyone? Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Game Cast. We are on episode, I think, 34? Yeah. Sure. 34. Um, I'm one of your I hosts, think... Kenny. I, I think we are. And with me is Tess. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we've we've had an a interesting week. Um, mine, not so much. I mean, I've, I started streaming uh, Tuesdays as well as Saturdays. It's kind of like, a, like an ongoing thing. And I've been doing... <laughs> Uh, since it's October, so like scary games and whatnot. Um, so I streamed, which is I, I guess not so scary. I streamed uh, Ghostbusters on Tuesday, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, but beyond that, also watching like horror films and things of that nature. And mm -hmm. interesting enough, so I was watching this show um, called Reality Z, and it's okay. it's it's weird because it's it's a remake of a show called Dead Set, a British horror comedy uh, show. It was only like five episodes long, and it was on. I saw it on Netflix, I think, a year or two ago, and it's basically about a group of people who are on the show, kind of like um, like The Bachelor or uh, you know, okay. where people like vote people off and stuff. Well, they're on the yeah. show during the zombie apocalypse, and the first episode is like, you know, the zombie apocalypse, like people are dying and everything, but everyone on the show that are in, in the show, because they can't see the outside world, don't know what's going on. And so it's an interesting, <laughs> interesting thing. And it actually was really good. So I'm watching Reality Z, which is a, uh, I think a Brazilian, yeah, Brazilian remake that, wow. um, which I was like, okay, all right. And the thing is, though, it goes past the five episodes of the initial show. Um, it's not as good as the original, but okay. it's interesting enough. There's enough, like, weirdness about it that just kind of works for the most uh -huh. part. Um, and being a zombie fan, like, there's not – I don't need too much to, to kind of enjoy myself. But yeah. uh, the whole reality show thing I thought was rather interesting because the, the contestants don't – they don't think any of this stuff is real. Like, they think it's, like, another contest or another – you know, because uh, they get voted off, you know, if they lose type of thing. Yeah. And so uh -huh. they don't think it's real <laughs> until it's too late. And so uh, I've been watching that on Netflix, and it's it's a bad show. It's a bad show. <laughs> but it's entertaining anyways. Um, <laughs> and, and, Thanks for the warning. Yes. Because I, 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 I don't, you know, I typically say things that I'm like, I don't want people to go watch, and then they feel away. So mm -hmm. just letting you know, that is it's not a good show. Um it's not <laughs> it's not but it's it's fun it's if, if it's like popcorn you want to laugh at some people do silly things there there is some good acting here and there I, I will say that but it's you know it's it's supposed to be funny but not in the way that we think um like i'm not laughing at the funny stuff i'm laughing at the stuff that's not meant to be funny um, okay so yeah, definitely check that out if you're if you're down for that. And Dead Set is on there, which is vastly superior. Um, you can okay. watch that on there as well if you're you know if you're in want to get into the Halloween because I know like I know HBO and Netflix and I think Hulu as well um, are doing like you know Halloween specials and stuff like that. So there's a bunch of Halloween or scary content on there right now. Mm -hmm. um, definitely check that out. Side note, I feel a way that. Um, the Charlie Brown stuff is not going to be mm -hmm. shown this year, not on TV. I mean, I don't have cable, so I guess whatever. But it's only going to be streaming. So, like, I know a lot of people who kind of have those shows, like, kind of like tradition. Like, you know, the, the mm -hmm. Thanksgiving one and the the Halloween, you know, the Big Pumpkin and all that. Um, mm -hmm. I feel the way that they're, they're, they're taking it off the air this year. I, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't understand why. I don't, whoever has the rights for it wants people to go to their streaming service to watch it. Oh, okay. So it's going to be like on Disney Plus or some nonsense or Apple right. TV or something. Which is kind of... Uh, I mean... I, I don't know. I mean, did somebody get mad at ABC like Shonda Rhimes did? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And that was... That's funny, too. There's a lot of funny stuff going on. Um, <laughs> this this past week, um, and I and, and not to be, uh, I don't know it. Not what's the word when you 
I don't want right. to like downplay like what what was going on because apparently it was a lot uh-huh. of bad stuff with Disney, but the the, yeah. the final straw was hilarious to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh, well, so you're not going to give me tickets to Disneyland? Oh, wait, you gave me tickets to Disneyland. You're not going to give my sister a ticket to Disneyland to take my daughter when I can't go? Like, what's the big deal? And then they want to be like, don't you have enough already? Oh, the audacity. That's pretty much what (laughs) happened in that situation. I brought you a billion dollars. I gave you four shows. Amazing you shows. Um, four amazing shows, for real, for real. Where is it like five now? I think but so. Like, you can't give me a measly two hundred dollar ticket for my sister for free. Aren't like aren't I on your payroll? Isn't there like an employee pass that doesn't even like? Okay, you know how if you work at Old Navy, you have to have an employee discount card or some nonsense? Right. You know, like when you go to another store, they can scan it, and then it's like, okay, it's you. I mean, I don't know. I don't work retail anymore, but I did for a really long time. We used to have, like, an employee discount card. Right. But um, when you work for a network, and, you know, your name is freaking Shonda Rhimes, and your face is everywhere, everybody knows what you look like, and you're like, hey, if you walk up to Disneyland, Shouldn't your name be on a billboard somewhere that says this woman comes in for free? You get what I'm saying? And I'm not right, saying that right. she's entitled to it. I'm not. I'm actually not even saying that, okay, you know, this billion dollar woman or whatever can't afford to pay for a ticket. That's exactly. not even what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we always grew up with this idea that, okay, I'm going to use this as a bad example, but um, uh, Bill Cosby always ate Ben's Chili Bowl for free. You know what I mean? It right. was like, So it's like, okay, if you're the president of the United States and you're going to a McDonald's, you don't wait in line. You know, if it's just like. It's just perks that comes with making these people a ridiculous amount of money. Like Exactly. And the the thing is like, (laughs) it was silly. So here's the thing. What bothered me about the whole report was for one, it, it overshadowed the things that she was being, the way she was being treated beforehand. Um, exactly. Because when I first read it, I was like, this is really silly to, for for you guys to have a falling out about this. But yeah. apparently there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, and this was like the last thing. My, the last thing. So let's set that aside. Like as a as a black woman who made them billions of dollars, they were treating her poorly. Let's 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 take that, yeah. put that in a little box and move that to the side. Now, yeah. looking just at this incident though, this is hilarious to me because I'm like, you have however much money um because she already has a pass uh just because she works with them she already has a pass with her name on it and she wanted another pass to get her sister you know because she she couldn't go that day or whatever the case would be and to me i'm just like you can afford this you can really 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 afford this you could buy Mm -hmm. a lot of people a pass to go to disney or uh, disneyland or whatever right but then on top of that i'm like you really want to go to disney land right now with covid like is that is that what's hot in the streets like we just we just go to to theme parks like that's what we do yeah that's um, what we do so i thought that was hilarious but then on the opposite side i was like disney like really you couldn't just slide yeah. her a pet and the, the idea that it cost them 200 it doesn't cost you anything to make her no, a pass it's no. your place. You don't even have to make a. You can have someone call down there and be like, "Look, such and such is gonna pull up, and when she does, let her in." You don't have to give exactly. her a pass forever, if anything. Yeah. Just be like, just let her in. Just that's all. Exactly. Just just pull her to the side. Like, hey, we got you. Just walk on through. You're good. Yeah. Like, what is the big deal? Like, what's the big deal? Everybody like, looks you- silly in this. Everybody looks so silly. Everybody. Like, there's not one person who doesn't look silly. Maybe the little girl. But she ended up looking silly because she was, uh, like, a party of, you know, right. she was associated. And she's probably like, all I wanted to do is go to Disneyland. I'm eight. But, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's like, wait, so I can't, she, I can't take a picture? I told all my friends I was literally going to come back with a picture of poo. Pics or it didn't happen. Do you know how devastating this is to an eight-year-old? Pics or it Fam. literally did not happen. Kids Damn. don't have object permanence yet. They don't understand. And you can't tell me she hasn't gone to Disney World or Disneyland before. If your mom works for Disney, there's no way that you got you made it to eight and has never been there. You waited till pandemic time to, to have this fight. Like, wait, 
Is anybody even going to Disneyland? Like, I don't know. You That's mean, why I feel like it just happened. Like, I feel like it happened a year ago. Like, I don't, I don't even, I don't even dude. know because I didn't read the whole thing because I was laughing too hard, and I'm oh. not laughing at her pain. I'm, a, I'm actually more upset. I literally am more upset as to the rigmarole of the whole thing. Right. It's just so the, foolish like, because. I just don't get it. I've never heard of this. I've never heard of this. It's, 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 I've never heard of it. It reminds me of like, you know, when, when Oprah was in the airport in like Prague or some nonsense and she wanted to buy a Birkin bag, but then the lady, like the salesperson didn't, because she was black, didn't, didn't believe that she could afford it and didn't want to pull the Birkin bag off the shelf. Right. But she just didn't do it and then, but didn't realize it was Oprah because, you know, that person grew up under a rock, you know, maybe right. they were on the streets their whole life and then they finally got a job at the airport. <laughs> In a in a in a baggage store, a luggage store, and they didn't know who the f Oprah was. Of all people, the world knows three people: Jesus, Michael Jackson, and Oprah. If you know anyone, <laughs> it's those three people. And none of us really know what Jesus looked like. Half the people think he was a white dude with blue hair, eyes, and blonde hair. Okay, and a Bible is telling us that he looks like Gandhi. Lord knows what he looks like, but everybody knows him. You can see his face and him. All right, so Jesus, freaking Michael Jackson, and Oprah, and you don't know who Oprah is, and you won't sell her a Birkin bag, even though she can afford 500,000 of them. Moving along, the point is the ridiculousness (laughs) of this woman trying to get into, trying to use her employee ID, which again... (laughs) Baffles me because she's gone to effing rhymes. And if one thing you do right when you work at the gate of Disney World or Disneyland, it's to fucking know who works for Disney. Okay? Right. Like... You should probably know, you, even though he's dead, you should probably know what Walt Disney's face looks like. Okay? That's the just very, a thing. Look, you should, like, honestly, you should know who her family is. Like, forget Thanks. her. Like, she's made you billions of dollars. Thing. You should let like who you who else you need to come in? Your grandma wants to come in too? All right, right. everybody. Line up. Right. This is this is the line dedicated for your family. Whenever you come right. to Disneyland, this is for your family. Right here. Just right go here. in. There's but, a whole episode on VIP treatment at Disney for on um, Blackish. Maybe all the employees didn't watch that episode. I don't, like there's supposed know. to be a valet. It's... There's supposed to be literally a valet who will take your family. Like that's the whole idea of VIP treatment. It just baffles me how Shonda Rhimes' family is stuck at the gate with an with an with an employee pass and can't get through. That it just baffles me. It Damn. baffles me. She, and it... Let me find out. Let me find out the the Avengers are going to show up in their outfits and not be let in. Sam, like, they, they <laughs> was so sad too. Is that she calls her agent and, and like, let me get over to Netflix. Like, who is who is competing with Disney Plus? Netflix. Why would you send like, I would have just given her leeway just because I don't want this to be out like as a report. Like, exactly. it's just too embarrassing. And then the talent, the talent leaves and goes to your competitor. Netflix. Like, why would this be? <laughs> Who? Oh my gosh! So, like, I know who's in charge. Your one job is to keep Shonda Rhimes happy. Who's in charge? She has the longest running drama. Okay, the longest running primetime drama, like in the history of TV, fifteen seasons. Like, or I'm sorry, did I say fifteen? Eighteen seasons. <laughs> yeah, I think like the only one that beats her is what CSI, and they and like I don't even know if that's fair because they have multiple versions of that. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Okay. It's crazy, and like I don't want to spend all our all t- time on her, <laughs> but like I just saw that and I was like, really, fam? This is what we fighting about during this. COVID? Like this. seriously? This. Um, I don't feel sorry for any of you rich people right now. Like I don't. I don't. Um, no. <laughs> so beyond that silliness, um. <laughs> And really bad shows. Um, how have you been doing? Because I, I heard you were having some, you know, some trouble with yes. like your neck or whatever. So it's been an interesting week. Okay, the week started off as a somber one. Um, I went to visit your mother-in-law. Yep. On I, Sunday. Yep. Yep. I heard about that. <laughs> yes, I did. So it was definitely started off as a somber week, and um, you know, and then went and visited your dad, your father-in-law, <laughs> <laughs> right afterwards. Um, he's looking spry and, and then, you know, when I'm right on into the work week. So, um, I think I had, um, 
I had um, Sunday and Monday off and um, Tuesday. So I get back to work and everything. And I'm not feeling so great because I'm not sleeping well. I really haven't been sleeping well at all. And I'm not sleeping well for two reasons. One, my dog is a psycho. As you guys know, you know, I had to yell at her last week for licking my clothes. Yeah. And um, <laughs> right. as of lately, she just doesn't want to sleep at night. And, and I understand, you know, she's been by herself all day. And she's not tired when I get home. Like, she's not sleepy when I get home. She wants to play and stuff. And I understand that. I try to, I try to wear her out, try to play and stuff. But whatever, you know what I mean? Right. And she's also kind of just acting this way because she feels alone. My sister's not here anymore. And she just wants to be near me during sleepy time instead of sleeping in her crate, which she's done for the last nine years. Okay? She want to act brand new. Like, she's <laughs> got, like going senile. She's losing her memory or some nonsense. And is acting like this crate thing is 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 a is a new thing. Like, what's that? Girl, you've been sitting in it all day, chilling and having a good time. Now, all of a sudden, it's night-night time. We have a whole song, a night-night song. If she goes in there when I sing the song, and then as soon as I start closing my door, she's like, Arr! Arr! Anyway, point is, she's being a hot mess. The, but the real reason I can't sleep is not her. It's because of my neck. So my neck has really, really been bothering me. And I will let you guys in on a little story. It's kind of ridiculous. But 10 years ago, I believe it was like 2010, um, I think I had bronchitis again or, you know, like I used to get sick four times a year. Every time the seasons change, I would just, you know, my allergies go crazy. And the next thing you know, I've got a respiratory infection or bronchitis or something that's really, really bad. Right. So I remember... I was really, 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 really sick, and I had gotten, like, I think my doctor gave me, like, promethazine with codeine, the good stuff, y'all. That's the good stuff. They don't even dispense that in, in like, the pharmacies anymore. Like, and I found that mm. out the hard way. I was literally working in the pharmacy, and I was like, hey, what happened to all the prometh with codeine? Because somebody called. Somebody called and was like, hey, um, yeah, I have a, a prescription for promethazine with codeine. And I was like, oh, okay, it's over here, da, da, da pharmacist like clicks the phone puts it on hold hey we don't sell pro meth with codeine anymore i said why he goes because adults are using it to make meth oh got it. <laughs> breaking bad <laughs> <laughs> so for all y'all who don't know pro meth with codeine is an amazing cough syrup and you can have promethazine without the codeine it's just promethazine and whatever it's you know anyway but with the codeine if you're coughing if you've got like spasmatic cough and you take that yo it's like, you know how like the NyQuil commercial always shows a person taking NyQuil like next to their bed because they faint right after they take it? Right. Think of NyQuil with like gin added. Like, I'm just telling you, promethazine with codeine will knock you out. That stuff is insane. And you'll, you'll be asleep, you'll be out, out like a light. And you won't <clears throat> cough. Like, if you're up coughing and you take that, mm, out like a light, for real, for real. Out okay. like what this is. Regular. Anyway, so moving on. So, <laughs> like, um, you are I, I'm take I took that because I was really sick. I think I had some I may have had something for like um I don't know, like a steroid time. Who knows? Who knows? But I was on a lot of stuff. I think I even took some mucinex like for the first time. And like the DM. I don't know. I was loaded up on medicine that the doctor had given me because I was so sick. I fell asleep that night, and I was on an air mattress, because I just moved into my apartment a few months earlier. I was sleeping on the floor. I was trying to do, like, futon style, because I thought, you know, I was trying to be, like, an anime character, and that didn't work out too well. I'm not really that comfortable. American floors and Japanese floors are not the same, so y'all, don't try to be cute. Just don't. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> so my sister was like, hey, let me buy you this queen-size air mattress. It's, like, 20 bucks from Walmart. And I was like, nah, girl, I don't need that. I'm good, I'm good. I'm sleeping on the floor. I've got a bunch of blankets. She's like, no, no, that's dumb. Brings me this air mattress, right? Yeah. But the thing about an air mattress is that when you have it and you're on carpet, it can shift in the middle of the night because it's carpet. Yep. So I put it against the wall, but it kept shifting. Like the, the, the air mattress kind of moved in the night. And I started noticing that I was like inching upward at night. And what ended up happening this night, because like I said, I was drugged heavily drugged with cough medicine and, and whatever the doctors had given me that I ended up hyperextending my neck over the, the mattress as I slept. So for about eight hours, I was knocked the F out. Like I said, I was seriously out like a light, like out. And I woke up the next morning with my head basically behind me. Oh 
my gosh. <laughs> I woke up looking at the wall. My head was hanging over the back of the mattress and like my nose was in the wall. And I'm like, hmm, I should probably get up now. And I was late for work. I slept through my alarm. I was just not a human that morning. And I ended up getting up and I was like, oh man, my neck hurts horribly, like really, really, really bad. But I managed to get up and go to work. And I was in a lot of pain, but you know, whatever. So anyway, about a night, either that night or the, the next night, because my neck was really bothering me, I went to my mom's house and she had this cervical spine pillow, you know, the ones that they're always like, oh yeah, you guys should sleep with these are really healthy right. for you. Yeah. So I got one of those. I, I mean, I took her pillow, went back to my apartment, put it on my mattress, went to sleep. I slept on that thing. The first night, my neck was worse the next day. I slept on it again. Cause I thought, oh, okay, you know, I just need to get used to it. I slept on it again. And the next night, the next morning I woke up, I think I woke up at like four or five in the morning or something, a complete cripple. Like oh, wow. I was a hunchback. I was in so much pain. I was screaming. I was crying. I didn't know what to do. And I was going to call an ambulance, but I just like went through the internet. I got on my phone and was trying to find the number to a, a chiropractor. I'm telling you right now that I did not shower that morning. I was sleeping in a really long shirt. I found the nearest pair of pants. <laughs> I, I am telling, I, I'm serious. I found the nearest pair of pants. They were loose pants, like track pants. I put those on. I could not put on regular shoes. So I slipped my feet into my rain boots. That's all I could do. And some sort of jacket. I had on no bra. Like I looked a hot, freaking mess but i hobbled my way over to the metro station got on the train got to the chiropractor as soon as they opened and they saw me hobbling in and opened the door and was like you must be the person who called and i couldn't i'm when i'd say i was a hunchback i really mean it i was hunched over and i was walking sideways i looked like i didn't look human and i was so disheveled and in pain, I was crying and they were like, okay, look, this girl needs a lot of help. They put me in the, in a room. Now, mind you, I don't like chiropractors because they are all Scientologists and crazy. And they made me, <laughs> they sat me down in a room. They made me watch a video. Okay. I don't know who makes somebody watch a video when they come in, in pain, screaming, bloody murder. So they made me watch a video and then they took some x-rays and she's like, Hey, you've got some compressed discs going on. Like you've got some disc activity. Do you have a doctor? And, and she ended up calling my primary care physician, calling my, um, no, no, we didn't talk to the, the ortho that day, but she called my primary physician and, um, talked to him, told him what was going on. And he had to call in muscle relaxers and Tylenol three for me. And mind you, I was already on pro meth with coding. Now he's sending me Tylenol three with coding. And, oh and I'm like, okay, so y'all want me to have a heart attack? Like what's going on here? So anywho, um, they ended up deeming my incident as an accident. They, and they were like, look, I told him exactly what happened, like how I hyperextended my neck. And then I slept on a, on one of those neck pillows. And they were like, yeah, your neck is fucked. So <laughs> and, 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 in short. <laughs> In short, I got three bulging discs out of all of this. And every time somebody asks me, they're like, what happened? Like, what's going on? What's wrong with you? And I literally say, and this is why I'm telling you, Beyonce stole this shit from me. I woke up like this. <laughs> I woke up like this. Okay? So, oh when he says, how'd you hurt yourself? Sleeping. I am <laughs> notorious. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm notorious for injuries and all that kind of stuff. But the best ones for me are the, my worst injuries. I've done nothing. I've literally done nothing. How'd you, how'd you break your foot? Oh, uh, I, I was walking and then, you know, a suitcase happened to be there. Oh, Teresa, how'd you break um, three toes? I was walking up the stairs. Oh, oh well, how'd you break your ankle? Standing for a picture. Oh, <laughs> how did you get? Three messed up, three bulging discs in your neck. Sleep. Oh my you know? gosh. <laughs> like, it's like uh, Elliot from Scrubs. Like, just, uh, just, yeah. oh yeah. my goodness, just pain. Yeah. Hot effing mess. So, mind you, this this incident was 10 years ago. And um, it has, like, reared its ugly head. 
in the, you know, every so often, but for the most part, I've been pretty good for several years in regards to this neck injury. And just more recently, obviously since last week, it's just flared up and I am in so much pain, like my arms, because, you know, when you have the neck issue, you have nerve issues. That's really how you feel it. It's not just like, oh, I have a stiff neck. No, like when your discs bulge, then all the nerves that come from your spinal cord from that area are affected. So basically I'm having nerve issues in both of my arms and it's oh, not rough. fun. Like my back, my neck is hurting obviously pretty bad all the way up into my, like the top middle of my back. Cause that's pretty much all of the discs that are affected, like right up to my thoracic spine. And yeah, so my arms are doing crazy. Like my hands are doing crazy things. My pinkies are doing, they're moving on their own. And yeah, I'm Edward Scissorhands at the moment. <laughs> Goodness. And, and for everyone, uh, out there I, I just want you to know that i offered to postpone the, the, the podcast oh, <laughs> i was like look we don't you can't even feel your arms like talk about like we it's it's okay we can we can look it's coco season people understand they are very understanding people right now uh that we could postpone yeah. it you can get your neck you know back in the right alignment and shit so you know that that out that's what we were gonna postpone i'm just because i don't want people upset with me like kenny you got this girl on them on the no. mic and her neck jacked up like i no, i had nothing to do with no. it look what i'm saying is this is therapy for me this helps <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is helping me out. This is helping out my life. La la la. <laughs> but no, I got a heating pad on my neck right now, so I'm, I, you know, I'm feeling a little bit of relief. I've definitely had some Advil in the last hour, so um, you know, that's helping a little bit. Not much, but just a little bit. I got to take a muscle relaxer. I should have done that an hour ago, but I was eating some Popeyes. Yeah, so I've been emotionally eating too because I'm a little frustrated because I haven't been sleeping, but that's okay. Because that's all going to end. Because on Monday, I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to get some new um, pictures. And you best believe that they're going to put me on the schedule for some nerve block injections. And I'm not going to feel this anymore. <laughs> I'm going to be great. I'm going to be able to break dance. We need to. No, don't. Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. Be, be all jacked up. Oh, gosh. I know. <laughs> Next time you're like, well, people are not filming this. Y'all be like, um, hey. Last week you looked decent, but this week your neck brace got a little bit bigger. <laughs> like, man, like, are you holding the mic with your feet right now? Like, you'd be like, yeah. nah, the dog's holding the mic, actually. <laughs> yeah, that would be fire on the low. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's it's been it's been crazy. Um, our our main subject uh, tonight was actually going to be <laughs> our favorite films. Some of them, yes. we're not going to go over all of them. Um, I yeah. have a, I have a ton. But just a few to kind of, uh, well, honestly, just to talk. Um, <laughs> yeah. Whenever I, I get a chance to talk about uh, Barry Gordy's uh, The Last Dragon, I, I mm -hmm. take the opportunity. And so yes. that's one of my favorite films. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, it's, one, it's interesting because when I was younger, this would be like if I got sick and I had to stay home from school or whatever. Yeah. Uh, this is a movie my mom would put on to make me feel better. Uh, that and uh, Legend, and we'll get to Legend in a sec. Um, mm -hmm. But like everything about it was really cool to me in a sense where, uh, for people to know, like I, I talk about the the Black Panther film because I'm like this is one of the first times we were a superhero and we were kind of like put on the same pedestal as like Tony Stark and all the other mm -hmm. characters or whatever. Whereas the Last Dragon, granted, it wasn't someone who was super. He was definitely relatable, you know, being on the you know being poor and all this other stuff. But then to have someone who was like in a martial arts film, uh, I don't want to say like Karate Kid, but like in the sense of like this was a our side of the, the tracks type of film or martial arts yeah. film, uh, comedy or whatever. And so it was cool to be like Leroy Green. Like it was cool to be like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, to identify with show enough because it was like it's this is our stuff even though it's it's yeah. it's goofy as all as whatever but it was still freaking cool and so yeah. pretending that I could you know I actually used to do be able to do a lot of the uh stuff that he does in the film like being able to mm -hmm. I, like the was it when you're on your back and you kind of like flip up 
Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that and like all his kicks and everything before I hurt myself. I was able to do it all. Right. <laughs> it was great. Uh, it also had a slamming soundtrack, uh, which I actually listened to not too long ago uh, via streaming. And mm -hmm. it's still really good, like surprisingly so. But I mean, it's Barry Gordy, so it, it makes sense. Um, exactly. And then I also had my, uh, I want to say first on-screen crush, which was Vanity. Um, mm -hmm. I, I t this was before I found out she was with Prince. And it apparently was all freaky freaky. But yeah, yeah, definitely. For for the most part, I how I saw her was based on the the film, and so yeah, it was just so many good things about this movie that I still watch like like constantly. Like it's it's at, I watch it. I have like the special edition like DVD or whatever. But like when it when it's on streaming platforms and stuff like that, I have to go see it. Uh, when we had cable, when it would come on TV, I would see it. Um, right i just never got tired of it like to be honest yeah yeah no definitely definitely that was that movie and i don't remember so much of it because i have not seen that movie in so long but i just remember when it would come on we're like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and yeah i just remember being us being like pressed and being like oh we get and i feel like we never watched it from start to finish like because it would come on and we didn't know it was on. We were flipping through channels and then it would already be on. Right. And then it was like, oh my God. So, so yeah. But I, I do remember like being a kid and being all ex like excited and being like, yes. And then missing half the movie. <laughs> kind, of, kind of actually depressing. <laughs> I'm an adult. I can own it now. <laughs> I know, right? You should like you know, watch the whole thing eventually? Yeah, I, I think that that's probably a good idea. I Maybe I should go and do that tomorrow. I mean, no, Saturday, because I'm off Saturday, and I will be resting Saturday. It'll make you feel better, I'm I've telling you. Yeah. It'll make you feel better. It won't heal your neck, but it'll right. make you feel better. <laughs> it, it might inspire me to do things that would injure my neck even more. However, once I would try to, like, once I would attempt, it was actually as I'm thinking to even do some of those things, the pain would start and then I'd be like, yeah, this is a bad idea. Just watch the movie. Yes, just, just please. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just watch it. But yeah, um, yeah, I thought that the, um, you know, the, the, the acting was, was decent for what it was, what it was and, mm -hmm. you know, the over-the-top characters. It was kind of like a comic book film in a, in a sense. Um, yeah. Because they had, you know, the fact that people in Harlem just know Kung Fu was like, like, really? Uh, right. And then they had like, like okay. yeah, they had shoulder pads and all this other stuff. Um, and like the one guy had a, I don't know if it was a piranha, like piranhas or something in his fish tank, but he would like feed it like, like huge slabs of meat. It just, it just was nuts, like crazy. Yeah. Um, but like in a coherent, you know, cult classic type of way. I, I was a big, big fan. Definitely a big fan of that film. Yeah, um, it made sense. What's one of your, uh, <laughs> one of your favorites? Um, so this is kind of funny because uh, I was at my sister's house the other day. Apparently, my nephew is forcing us to clean out the house because the basement at my so my mom's house actually is ex it's packed full of like obviously the stuff that we grew up with when we were in the house, right. and then um, and then. My sis and then obviously all my mom's stuff and then my aunt's stuff and then my sister and her whole family moved in and so all of their stuff. So basically the house is packed with stuff. So we get over there and she's like, Hey, there's some stuff in the basement that's yours. I go downstairs and I see some DVDs and I'm skipping I'm like, Hey, these are my DVDs. I'm going through there and I see Tropic Thunder. I said, Yeah, this is mine. Oh gosh. <laughs> don't care what anyone says i have a few like top movies and they're all really stupid like i have my top series movies like that i love and that really get me and da, da, da. but i have these top stupid movies and number one is zoolander and then like why, the why though <laughs> because okay i swear to god we talked about this before but because yeah. <laughs> zoolander, i don't care what anyone says zoolander is my favorite movie I do not know how, how those two idiots made this movie so entertaining for me. Like, I love anything Owen Wilson does, okay? I do. I, I've been in love with Owen Wilson since I was, I don't know how old. 
doesn't matter. He cracks me up. <laughs> He's ridiculous as heck. His broken nose is so hilarious. It just gets me every time. It's like, how many times has your nose been busted? Like, why do you look like this? And he's, so like, wrong. he's just so simply and unapologetically him. He's just like, yeah, everything's dumb. Everything's stupid. I tried. I tried to talk to them about being this way. They just wanted to keep being dumb. What do you want me to do? Like, that's how he talks. And I love it. I can't get over it. He's an idiot. And then you had Ben Stiller to this. And you have Blue Steel and Magnum and all kinds of dumb things. And Jerry Stiller. For crying out loud, that movie is full of crazy, hilarious Fam. people. And they all play their part. Fam, when they, I, I swear I turned my brain off when they started fighting with uh, gasoline. <laughs> and that's in the first three minutes of the movie. My whole, my whole, my whole, I was like, I started questioning my life. Like, I was like, why are you doing this to yourself? This doesn't make any sense. He said it was nothing but a little gasoline fight. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> what? Like, and then he's just standing there with his coffee, just like watching them play with the gasoline. <laughs> or Tamikis. Like everybody is so, so stupid. And I'm like, oh, I feel bad for all the male models around the world right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then they all died. And then, so my point <laughs> is, don't care. Zoolander cracked me up. It only took three minutes for that to happen. I, I laughed and cried for the rest of the movie. It was too funny. Everything that happens in that movie is dumb, but it's calculated. And you, you can't get better than that. Billy Zane shows up. Come on. My favorite human in the world. I mean, God rest his soul. He's gone, David Bowie. But my favorite human literally shows up in the movie and says, it's a walk-off. And he's like, and then they put on, let's dance right then. I think this, is brilliant. this is comedy gold, okay? Oh Everything is dumb. Everything is stupid. <laughs> and it's supposed to be stupid. And it's not like so far slapstick, like, you know, um, what's his face's movies? All of those, um, you know, like, like Airplane. All yeah. Those Although know, I, Airplane is a classic, though. Yes. I love, I still love Airplane. <laughs> but like, it's like it's on that level, but it was more new, obviously, when it came out. I think it was 99 or something. But anyway, my point is, I love Zoolander. That's like my number one top comedy. It just it cracks me up every time I know all the words. I can watch it over and over and over again. I used to watch it when I was depressed. I used to watch it when I was sad. I can watch that movie no matter what, and it still makes me laugh. And everything, Mugatu, everything is still funny. Mila Jojovich, everything. But, so, I have that. And then I have Tropic Thunder. Like, it's like right under. Because <laughs> <laughs> Tropic Thunder is, again, so stupid. And I'm like, you did it again, Ben Stiller. You did it again. You did it again. Like, and, and Robert Downey Jr. makes that movie for me. He does. He makes that movie for me. There's just nothing better than him playing this, this Australian dude. <laughs> like, I'm the dude playing the dude who's acting like another dude <laughs> like, i i was done i was i was just done he has to take out his contacts and you know like he he takes the wig off he takes off the little afro wig and he has his blonde hair under it and he like try to remove the contacts and he has blue eyes and he's like yeah, this is the I'm really Australian. So you were this Australian dude the whole time playing a black American. <laughs> you got your skin done. It wasn't even that. It was, uh, he was the Australian dude playing another dude pretending to be a black dude. Like, exactly. Like, exactly. <laughs> he's like, I, it's roles within a role. I'm like, what, is, what yes. is, and then what's his name with, um, was it the rapper who, yes, he had booty juice or something like booty that? Booty juice, booty juice. <laughs> And he was booty sweat. It was booty sweat. Yes. <laughs> booty sweat. That's so sick. And he was dating Lance Bass the whole time. Oh my gosh. Oh man. I mean, everything in that movie was a parody. Everything meant something. Like everything had its purpose. And it was I just felt like the timing was good. Like it's it's not even ill timed now. You know, yeah. like I could still go back and watch it and be like, oh my God, this is still funny. I'm still I, watching. I think I feel the way you feel about like 
those films like Zoolander and whatnot is the way I feel about about um, Anchorman. Like, yes, Anchorman yeah. is crazy funny, and I think you know what it is too. I think when you watch comedies with people, they make it more mm -hmm. funny. Yeah. Because I swear I showed that film to uh, a few people, and they're like, "What are you, what are you smoking?" But I'm like, "It's." Dude, there's so many funny layers to this film. Like it's the the so big good. the big brawl with all the like different news uh, anchors or whatever was great. Yes. Um, I love it when he's like he's like tormented. He's outside. He's like drinking milk. And he's like, oh, it's a bad choice. <laughs> oh my god, keep it classy. Like people in California literally say that this is their news. Like this is how bad their news is. It's so I don't want to say everybody in California because that's not true. Right. But like I've known people who are either in like San Diego or or something, and they're like, "Yo, our news. This is really our news. <laughs> like it's shallow as hell. It has no basis in anything. <laughs> like oh obviously gosh. prior to 2016, but like you know, back when they had nothing better to talk about." So, yeah, those those movies just really, really cracked me up because they really just are kind of like extreme parodies on life. And it's it's just hilarious because I'm sitting here like you took the most like mundane of humor or stuff that I, I feel like I don't mean like you have to like have a, a twisted sense of humor, but it's like you kind of took the every day of something and put it in the forefront and then showed how ridiculous it really is. But yeah. then anybody who really does find it funny can find the the that this is really everyday life, the monotony of everyday life. And it's like, wow, you pictured this so well. You did it so well. And you highlighted the ridiculous. Hats off to you. I see you. <laughs> you know? Oh, gosh. <laughs> and this is why we need a sequel. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, man. Wait, are, are they doing a Zoolander too? They did Zoolander 2 already. Oh, they so, did? Okay. Yeah, because when, first of all, the Zoolander 2 was supposed to come out way, way, way before it did. It was supposed to come out years ago, and, like, I guess they didn't have a script, and whatever, they were working on it forever. And they finally come out with a script. They finally come out with Zoolander 2, because me and my best friend, Chris, loved Zoolander, and so we were so ready for it. And then we never went and saw it, and then I finally saw it on my own. It's it's nowhere near as funny as the first one to me. You know, there were people who didn't think it was funny at all. So whatever. I don't care. I don't speak to them. But <laughs> the second movie does not have the same pull as the first movie. But it's still funny to me because anytime I get to see Owen Wilson act like an idiot, I'm okay. I really am. <laughs> yeah, he, I, he's one actor where, like, he acts the same in nearly every film, but it works. Yeah. Like it, it works, works, it works pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Another one of my favorite films is uh, Legend, uh, yes. and this is also a cult classic uh, for it multiple is. reasons. Um, one of the first, uh, I think, Tom Cruise films, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I like it's obviously it doesn't hold a candle to the newer films like The Lord of the Rings and things of that nature. But the reason I like this film growing up was because it was. It allowed me to kind of go to a place like you know how people talk about Star Wars or like some of these other films and they're like it was like amazing my imagine you know based on a your imagination like you could imagine yeah. being there. Well, with yeah. Star, Star Wars came actually later for me for me than this film, and right. it was like oh I was actually here with unicorns and elves and demons and mm -hmm. monsters and all this other stuff. So it was like I got to because I used to watch um, the stop motion films. Uh, like Sinbad and you know uh, Attack, yes. of, Attack of the Titans and stuff like that. Like I really enjoy those you know epic fantasy films. And so this one though was amazing because not only was uh, the music great, but then you know acting and everything like that. But then also it has some of the best uh, makeup effects. Like oh my god, the makeup ever. is amazing! Didn't it win Oscars for that? Uh, it won a bunch of awards actually for the costume design, makeup artist, special effects. Like mm -hmm. just hats off to all of it like it was amazing yeah. and i think that's why it helped to like immerse you because like with, when i was watching the like sinbad like you would have like the skeletons and stuff and they would be walking in, and you can tell that they're fake you can see the strings you can see how um you know like it they're strobing for the most part that's like a yeah. a hip-hop term 
uh, that's where we get those dance moves from is actually from yeah. these films. Anyways, um, just me being extra nerdy. So, uh, really cool You're stuff. You be nerdy too. Right. <laughs> really cool <laughs> stuff. And, you know, I thought, granted this, watching it now, I, although I understand the story, it's a little, it's, it's artistically done. I'll say that in terms oh, yeah, of yeah. actually delivering a, a cohesive story. Like there's a whole dance number that doesn't need to be in the film. Um, it, it's pretty, I, I wonder if, I, I kind of agree with you, and at the same time, I'm like, hmm, there was a whole reason for, I don't, Ridley Scott, man, you just got to give it up to Ridley Scott, because yeah. that's just, that's just so him. And what's amazing, I actually found out, because I got, uh, some years ago, I bought, like, a special edition version of it, and there's two different versions, and it was interesting is, I had seen both of these and didn't know it, so oh, I had wow. seen that the, the uh, I guess theatrical version, and so that mm-hmm. one I know. I know the I know the cuts and everything, right? There's this. Uh, I want to say a director's cut version. There is the director's cut. Yes. It has different music, and it has yep. certain scenes that are extended and certain scenes that are missing from the, yes. the other one, and so it feels like a different film in certain places. And what happened was I saw the movie a long time ago, and I saw it one way, and then mm-hmm. I, about when I saw it, I was living in Germany, so when I came here and saw it it was like i you know how like when you watch a film on like usa or whatever at the time they yeah. they, they cut it or they change it or yeah. you know they all the curse words are like you know mickey flicky and all that so yeah. i'm thinking that they didn't have the license or something to get the original soundtrack and all that other stuff but and actually there's two different versions and yep. the feeling the the two different versions the way they sound is completely different to the point of certain scenes have taken on a, a totally different emotional, you know, yes. feeling watching it. And I was like, this is amazing. Like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, you're like, I was robbed. Exactly. I was like, this is so cool to have two different versions. I have them talking about, you know, why they made the changes and what kind of went, you know, because um, yeah. there's one is more darker than the other. It and, is. you know, the only other film I could think of that kind of does that was, um, Dang it, what's that cyberpunk film? Uh, I'll, I'll think of it in a minute, but there's only a few films that I know that has a completely different score and, com- you know, sh- different scenes and whatnot um, mm-hmm. to the point of, like, almost feeling like a totally different film. Yeah, um, like, that's they, a lot of work. It's a ton of work, and to not release it, you know, I mean, they did they did eventually release it, but not, like, mainstream like they did the other version. And so yeah, they did it way later. I swear they didn't do it until it came to DVD. Like, no joke. Right, right. And that's kid. and then I watched it as a not even like a teenager. I I think I was like twenty or something when I watched the director's cut because I watched it with my friend because she had she's like, hey, I, I got Legend, and I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just watched it, and and then I don't remember if she let me borrow it or not, but I just remember having the director's cut and watching it alone. Like, I definitely watched it with her. But I watched it alone. I watched both of them. I watched them basically back to back just because I knew it was different. Yeah, I did the same so thing you did now, years ago. I'm 38 now. Oops, sorry. Nobody's supposed to know that. <laughs> Ever in a day ago. And I think I watched whatever, um, you know, when they talk over it, you know, directly yeah. or whatever. Because I just didn't have anything better to do because I was a bum and broken, you know. Didn't matter. The point is, yeah, every time a unicorn gets its horn back, like, a lot of things go through me. There's a lot of feelings. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things. And there were a lot of emotions. And I felt a lot of emotions when I walked, watched that movie. It's it's cra- And then the, the uh, you know, Tim Carey's character uh, playing Darkness. Yeah. Um, again, like amazing special effects, amazing just yeah. practical makeup and, and, and effects. Um, and it was like, you know, because he, it, unfortunately, he's not, uh, you know, they never made a sequel or anything. So he's not an ongoing villain, similar to know, like, like you know, like, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings, you know, they have their villain that is all through all three films or um, even like just monsters like, you know, Freddy Krueger or whatever. Like he didn't get that type of vibe. But Mm -hmm. he's still extremely memorable as one of the best-looking villains in a film. Like, Mm -hmm. it's bananas. Um, Yeah, they won an Oscar for Best Makeup. If you haven't seen Legend, I mean, you have to take it with a grain of salt in terms of me giving all this praise. It's a very good film, but 
in terms of storytelling, it's a little hit or miss. There's some parts that will make you cringe. Um, Mm -hmm. But beyond that, for its time, and even now, it's really freaking good. Um, Yeah. And I think some of the uh, techniques that they use eventually led to other things, like uh, the Lord of the Rings and and whatnot. Oh, definitely. In terms of how they, they were able to dress or, like, you know, put on a costume, essentially. Um, yeah. Amazing stuff. I think, uh, yeah, that's that's still my favorite film, I think, of all time right of now. Of all time? I think it is, and I think it's it's more so nostalgia, because uh, mm-hmm. I've, I've, obviously I've seen better films, but it's it's yeah. nostalgia. I think the, the, the time in my life when I saw it, it was like, I want to do something creative. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of like that that stepping stone that kind of gets you into, you know, fantasy, that gets you into yeah. comic books, gets you into, you know, because after that is when I saw Star Wars, you know, Star Trek, like all this other stuff. And yeah. so it was like the catalyst for the most yeah. part. Yeah, so I, I agree with you. Definitely, definitely one of my favorite. I need to get it on four, in 4K just because. Um, oh, yeah. But I, I'm a big fan of, of Legend. You should go see it if you haven't seen it. Yeah, if you haven't seen, I, that is something that, first of all, if you're one of those young people who are listening to us, um, there's a lot of things you miss. So I right, just go back in time. Just try that. Just get a spaceship. I yeah, don't know what else yeah. Do, do uh, stream it if you can. Yeah, you should. That's one of those. That's one. I mean, like, I, I don't, I don't know since I'm not that young, but I don't know what the little kids nowadays like what their fantasies were growing up because things were so easily readable read, readily available at their fingertips so if you're one of those young people who you know you might be in your mid-20s or younger or stuff like i understand that the things that you may have thought were fantastical were much more easy for you to get they were just more available to you uh animation was better did this that and the other but like when we were growing up in our time we did have that stop motion stuff we did have right. um you know like what was amazing to me when i was a kid was the last unicorn like yeah. that, that was my favorite movie when I was little. And then we got Jim Henson. You know, we had The Dark Crystal. Those things to us were amazing. These Muppets or puppets or um, claymation type things were amazing to us at that time. So when Legend came out, that was fantastic. Mind you, I was like three. But I saw it when I was a little <laughs> bit older. <laughs> right. You know, I was a little bit older when I finally saw it, and I'm like, I should, you know, teenager or whatnot, or, or young, like seven or whatever. And and so this was like all of the fantasy that I ever could imagine. That right. was it. Like they had this, unicorns. They had freaking unicorns. What else do you need? Right. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That awesome. was the pinnacle of the genre for me, and especially because it wasn't sweet. It was dark. So, like, for me, that was, it was like a combination, and, and I enjoyed it. I, I mean, Hermione, did you want to get on camera? Is like, did you want to be recorded tonight? You, you got jealous because <laughs> we were talking about unicorns, so you just had to make your mark. Is that what you're going to do every week? That's probably what she's going to do every week. Probably. <laughs> Especially <laughs> now that you're uh, incapacitated. She's like, you can't stop yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. She's like, what you going to do, break your neck again? Break your neck. So, <laughs> yeah. So we ah, had, um... <laughs> Blade Runner. That's what it was. Blade Runner. Blade Runner is Blade um, Runner. it has I think four versions, but that's mm. another film that does the whole, you know, and that's Ridley Scott too, I believe. Uh, where it's like yeah. it does the whole. They have a second version of the film that's totally different from mm-hmm. what came before, to the point of if you if you if you're not paying if you're paying attention if you're not paying attention, I'm sorry, you'll think it's a new movie, like. Uh, right. That's how that's how different it is, um, but yeah, like I just wanted to throw that because I, I it was in the back of my head and I couldn't remember. Um, <laughs> Got it. But yeah, Blade Runner definitely. Yeah, um, you can't really get away with doing that right now. I guess contracts are way different because I was told by somebody that like the way they did um, the Three Musketeers back in the day was like you know everybody was signed their contracts to do the movie The Three Musketeers, and um and the next thing they knew, all the actors, the next thing they knew another movie came out with all of them in it. And they were like, wait a minute, when did we film this? Because they were wow. filming both movies simultaneously and nobody knew. <laughs> wow. So if you buy the, 
the DVD, like if you, you could buy the DVD set now, or I shouldn't say DVD because nobody's buying DVDs anymore. You know, it's either Blu-ray or it's, um, or it's digital download. But like, I bought the DVD to Three Musketeers probably in like year 2008 or something. Yeah. And it comes with two movies. It's not just like a double disc one movie. It's two movies. It's the Three Musketeers and and the Four Musketeers or something. I can't remember. But the it's two movies. It's it's like it's almost as like you know the movie was four hours long. It's literally two movies. Yeah, it's okay? it's crazy. It's, it's, like, it's a sequel, all right. And then apparently, this is what I was told. Somebody else told me this, and they said that this is real. That the actors weren't aware that they were filming two movies. Like they signed a contract, they believed that they were getting paid for one movie, and they. That's insane. They made two. <sighs> that's like the ultimate caper <laughs> that's that's insane yeah and it's it is not like um you know Zack snyder uh who's getting a redo on you know the justice league film it wasn't like that like no from the start they're yeah. like we're gonna make two films because uh you know they you know in their mind it's like look this film i have so many different ways i want to go with it and yeah. i'm probably not going to get a chance to do a sequel so we're yeah. just going to shoot two different versions and because, you know, no one would know because there's always deleted scenes, right? There's always scenes exactly. that just doesn't make the cut. So no one's going to think like, oh, we're shooting two versions. No, like this was a scene. They cut that scene. We had to redo it for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Nah, nah, fam. There's, he's like, no, we're keeping all this. We, we're keeping yeah. all this. Keeping it all. And then when I go into the editing room, all right, when, when in, nobody else, the actors aren't in there, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> The director's in there cutting tape. There's tape all over the floor, you know, <laughs> sitting there putting stuff together, slicing, running, all this. N okay, there's no tape on the floor. I don't think that they do this anymore. Nobody's shooting on 35 millimeter. Right, yeah. <laughs> but but you guys get what I'm saying. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, Since we're in that genre and we're talking about this, but, like, uh, obviously another favorite movie that's in the same genre was Labyrinth. Yes, yes. The Babe with and the Power. Exactly, the babe, the babe with the power, and David Bowie being my favorite human on the planet until his untimely demise, oh, and then also my favorite actor, Alan Rickman, decided that he wanted to join the club too. I'm still upset with the both of them for doing this, especially because that was one of the worst years ever, 2016, uh, yet I digress, but Legend was an amazing movie oh labyrinth and, and sorry both yes labyrinth <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys haven't seen labyrinth obviously you need to do that why because david bowie has the most amazing hair you could ever want from anybody i really think that um rumiko takahashi kind of saw david bowie and was like i'm gonna draw say shomaru and that's really weird <laughs> 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 um anyway so Legend uh, Labyrinth is great, and you know the. I don't need to tell you guys backstory. Girl doesn't like her little stepbrother, or whatever he is. Baby makes a lot of noise. She wishes some shit, and you know when you're a kid and you wish things, things come true, like you know right. demons and goblins and dragons, and then they kidnap her brother, and then she's got to go into this labyrinth world, and she's got to answer a bunch of puzzles and questions so that she can get through this actual maze, a real labyrinth. Right. And. Yeah, your wife loves this movie. <laughs> yes, I made sure to get a special edition for her too. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I remember us watching that when we were in like college or whatnot, just because. But I do adore that movie. That was always a lot of fun. And I don't know. I, I maybe because at that age, I kind of like when I was young and a teenager or whatever watching this, I kind of thought that I was in the movie. I probably still think I'm in the movie. <laughs> it was interesting. It was uh, yeah. like, it's kind of, well, first of all, it's definitely a Jim Henson uh, company this, you yeah. know, film in terms of the singing, uh, the Muppets, and, yeah. you, you know, just the wackiness of it. Uh, yeah. But then it also, it, it, it poses a, you know, it's always a lesson. And the yeah. fact that she was able to, you know, to learn, basically to, to, to love her brother. Um, and to not <laughs> wish for horrible things on upon people, uh, exactly. but just getting to that point, 
is you know its own little adventure and it's it's interesting it's definitely 80s it is def it's you know it's so 80s uh the from the hair to the clothing uh the dialogue it's it's i can understand not wanting to watch it now (laughs) um if if you didn't grow up with it you have no i can't get with anybody who can't get down with these the 80s movies were so bad and they created the b genre yeah you yep (laughs) That, like, yep. Speaking of like, B, did you have you ever watched um Mirror Mask? Mirror Mask? Apparently, I like, probably have. We actually own that. It's uh, it's actually a uh, spiritual successor to the Labyrinth, also done by the Jim Henson Company. Has a similar okay. story. It's a little. It's more on the darker side, though. It's not as uh, you know, there's not you know singing and stuff like that. But uh, special effects are great. And it has a similar similar theme. If you like the Dark Crystal and the Labyrinth, it's definitely a movie I would recommend checking out. I want to okay. say it came out in nine, uh, 2004, 2005, wow. I think. Okay, um, I can sit down with that. Dope film. But anyways, yeah, the Labyrinth is 80s. So if you're into punk hair, or at the very least you think the retro stuff is dope, I would check it out. I'm not sure if it's streaming anywhere uh, at the moment. I don't know, yeah. It should be, though. We'd have to look for it. I mean, it should be streaming. It should. There's no reason not. And if it's not streaming, just buy it because you need to support Jennifer Conley because clearly she has to spend a lot of money to never get that unibrow ever again. Oh, my God. I love her. <laughs> That's okay, so wrong. she's an amazing actor. But man, sometimes when you have to go back in time and look at these actors and the way that they looked when they were young, and you see the, and you're like, dang, you got a waxer. You because <laughs> the unibrow is real. It's real. It's real. You can't it's unibrow right. shame people. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually, to be honest with you, I'm not even shaming. I hope it doesn't come off as shaming. It's coming off as shaming, I know, because I can hear it in my own voice. But it's actually mad respect. It's mad respect. You went on TV like that. And I kind of <laughs> wish that I had that unibrow game. I kind of wish I did. Because clearly it gave you the mojo and you were in the awesomest movie. And you're still awesome. And people still think you're awesome. Nia Long had a unibrow before. When she was a zebra head. Yo! Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. The unibrow was, it was It was clearly in back then. It was something. I, I, I'll tell you that. Um... But she's she's gotten you know gotten it removed since or at least she's waxing yeah, more definitely often. threading um, but it's not uh it's not it definitely didn't affect her uh no. her starring in films going forward it made her stronger it, <laughs> was it she was like totally Samson it, now <laughs> it was her superpower so that's what the, you know Oscar nods clearly come from Unibrow just saying man goodness it's just, and the Dark Crystal has a sequel, by the way. So people need to get up on that. I tried, to start, I tried watching it when I was at my sister's house. And then for some reason, people were like, I don't want to watch this. And they put on, like, something dumb. Like, I don't know, football. <laughs> yeah, it, apparently it got, um, unfortunately it got canceled, though. Like, it was only one season. Um, That's bad. And I think it was, I don't know, it was supposed to be a prequel or so. Um... I didn't get a chance to, to watch it myself, but yeah, I, I heard about it coming to Netflix and they, you know, they end up canceling, but Netflix been, has been kind of on a tear with their yeah. shows because it, from them, it's like, if it's not bringing in new people constantly, yeah. uh, you know, cause they start in the red, they, they pay all this money and, yeah. you know, for these shows and then they get, as you know, they get a new season, they have to pay more. And so if it's not, even if the show's popular, if it's not, you know, bringing in people it's like Stranger money, Things. Yeah. Uh, it's not gonna, it, you know, it's not gonna stick around. So, um, yeah. And again, like the Dark Crystal, that's an old thing. So I can understand not yeah. a lot of people watching, outside yeah. of the people who remember it fondly. Um, right. So. No, you're right. It's true. That's and that's kind of the hard part. I, I, it's just a hard part. Not just about reboots in the general sense, but it's like it was very niche and it was really cool back then. But we're adults and we're all busy, and so. I, I think a good example might even be the tick. Remember how we were talking yeah. about like it's it's almost before its time. It's like it was perfect if you knew about it, if you were one of those people who remembered 
I'm like, oh my god, the tick? What? Right. And then you would you could you would be involved, but it was like for new people, it was just like, who's this dude walking around in this blue suit? Okay, I gotta go do something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't attract you really quick, or it doesn't get, you know, the level of uh was it bird box meme to death? If it's not to yeah. that level, it's probably not going to get picked up because yeah. it's there's just so much content now. Like so much, it's ridiculous How do you get amount. Recognized? Yeah, it's hard to float to the top unless you're, you know, one of the shows that Netflix is pushing or you know Disney mm-hmm. Plus. Um, it's just it's hard to be noticed, and yeah. so, I yeah, I, it's it's it right. It's unfortunate. Um, yeah, but. Like we said, all the originals are there. Definitely go check it out. You can watch the Labyrinth I see on uh, Prime Video um, if you if you're with Prime or if you have. I know I think Voodoo has it as well. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, all the movies actually, if you want some some retro stuff to watch, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Yes, they are. Dope. And that is our show uh, <laughs> for tonight or our cast for tonight. Anyways, feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you are up on when we post. Since we don't be doing it on the right <laughs> the right day every week, <laughs> stuff be happening, fam. Like it's it's 2020. I shouldn't have to explain yeah. myself. Stuff happens. Um, but stuff yeah, yeah, we typically record on Thursday nights. Uh, so you know, if you have a suggestion on topics, uh, things of that nature, let us know before then. You know, like yeah. in the comment section, and then we could talk about it. Uh, someone did ask me about when we're going to be bringing the podcast to uh, streaming services, so like you know, SoundCloud or not, yeah, SoundCloud, and you know, places like that. And for me, I want to get our, the sound quality up. Um, and right. once we do that, then we can look into housing. But also with that, we'll have a bunch of podcasts ready to go, so new people can kind of pick it up pretty quickly. So we, we have a plan. We have a plan. Mm-hmm. But until then, rock with us on YouTube, please. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate it. And like I said, share yeah. with your friends, your families, the people that you don't like. Um, yes, definitely the people you don't like. So, I, seriously, get this and send it to the people you don't like. I know there's more people you don't like than you do. Right. That's- yeah. So just be like, that. you know what? I don't even like you, but here, just just listen to this. You might listen enjoy it. it. We might be friends, probably not, but still, listen to this. It's some mm-hmm. good stuff. Um, it is. But yeah, that's that's our show. Uh, like I said, thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening through yeah. us being silly, and we hope to see you next week. We do hope to see you next week. We hope that you um, have ears and you have your sense of taste and your sense of smell. Meaning, don't go out there and get corona, guys, okay? Right. All right. I'm really serious about this. I just got some really bad news that my best friend has corona. And um, I need you guys out here protecting yourselves and being serious about this pandemic. It's real. We tell you every week, and I mean, every week we're on, and we joke about it, and we tell you to wash your hands, and we tell you to wash your butts, which, of course, we still want you to do. Right. Please do that. Please continue to wash your hands and your butts. It's extremely important. And it's really important for you to wear your mask. Even if it becomes uncomfortable, please wear your mask. If you don't want to wear your mask, please don't go out. Please stay home. If you can't trace where you've been and who you've been in contact with in the last seven days, please don't go visit anybody. Please don't do that. If you are around droves of people, please, the next time you go somewhere, in fact, just don't go. If you're going to be around droves of people, stay home for the next 10 days. Please do this because what happens is people are asymptomatic and they're passing this around. Right. I really, really need you guys to really be out here and thinking really long and hard about where you've been, who you've been in contact with. Did you take your mask off? How long were you in contact with? The CDC just released guidelines saying that it only took 30 seconds to pass the virus from one person to another in close contact. They are actually changing their their guidance from saying close contact is no longer just, oh, being in the same vicinity with somebody for a couple of hours. It's like, it's, it's one minute. It's actually 60 seconds in close contact, which is just one room with another person. 60 seconds now means close contact, which means a grocery store, which means an elevator. 
So if you are not wearing your mask, then you are not helping the situation. We need the pandemic to end as soon as possible so we can get back to our lives. Please, right. everybody, wash your hands and your and butts your butt <laughs> and wear your mask. We love you. We thank you for listening. And we hope you can listen to us next week with all of your senses, taste <laughs> and smell. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye.